Nobody has an eight inch floppy. Oh, hello chip dippers. Welcome to another Quick Bites, a retro recipe without all the bells and whistles. Thank you. At least she doesn't have a bell. Now recently I showed you a really nice way to finally get the C64 Mini or Maxi working with real floppy disks. And we created a nice little home for that USB floppy disk drive. But there were a few loose ends that I really think we should tie up to perfect this project. Yes, I'll put it down. Now in that project, we established that high density 1.44 megabyte disks only worked when formatted in Mac, not Windows. Once you go Mac, you never go back, right? Don't lick that. But if you only have Windows, don't get floppy envy. I'm here for you. Now you really need high density disks because many of those USB floppy drives warn you that they only support high density, not the 720 kilobyte standard density. And of course, high density can also store twice as many games. And thanks to a lot of you that commented, I think we finally have an answer as to what's going on. Now, firstly, remember that the C64 is, that's right, expecting to see a USB flash drive, don't make that, and not a floppy disk. The Mac is treating the floppy disk like a flash drive, or at least it's giving us the option to do so. You'll have seen that with the menu item that I clicked on when formatting the floppy last time, master boot record. But unfortunately, Windows and the new versions of DOS give no such option when formatting floppies. And this crucially means that the Mac can format a floppy as a raw block device, complete with a master boot record and a partition table. But Windows is trying to be more automatic, trying to be more clever, without having any conceivable reason as to why you'd be weird enough to want to format a floppy disk as a flash drive. It just goes ahead and formats it as a floppy disk with no partition table and no master boot record. Can you stop doing that, please? Thank you. So the problem is when you insert the Windows disk and connect the floppy drive to the C64 Mini or Maxi, it just doesn't see anything because there's no partition table and no master boot record. Okay, she wasn't listening. So we've stumbled into a weird kind of wonderful ironic situation where something that was never meant to work and never intended to work does work because the Mac isn't working right, or at least it's allowing us to be a little bit unconventional. But this also helps answer another question. And sadly, no, even if you use a USB adapter with a real Commodore disk drive, you still can't connect it to the new VC64. And one of the many reasons for that is the C64 is looking for the FAT directory starting at track zero, but Commodore used the GCR format instead of FAT, whereby its drives are hardwired to store the directory in track 18 to speed up head movement either way. So there's no way the C64 could ever read such a disc. It's kind of like asking a CD player to read a vinyl record. So all of this begs perfect. The question, how do we format, yes, this, the high density floppy disk in Windows? Oh, you're a good girl. Where are you going? Well, rather than bore you with the two days that I've spent trying to work this out and failing, let's just skip ahead to what I think will work. See, up until now, I've been trying with Linux, with old versions of MS-DOS, like 3.2, but I have a hunch there may be another way to go, just like she did. Now we know this Mac formatted disk works in the C64. So then, so I, then thought, I thought, what if I create a clone of this exact disk that any of you can write onto your blank floppies? Now, strangely, both the Mac and Linux are failing to image this disk. There's still something a little weird going on. So I've downloaded a copy of DD for Windows. It's a command line disk utility that is standard in Linux and donationware for Windows. And with it, I'm able to not only create an image from that disk, but also write that image back to new disks. So the big question is, do they work when inserted into the C64 Maxi or Mini? Yes. Fantastic, huh? High five indeed. So that's the formatting sorted. And if all you want is a blank disk to save programs onto, well, you're done. However, because Windows can't read that Mac cloned disk, any actual copying of games needs to happen in Linux on the PC. 
You can install Ubuntu Linux in VirtualBox completely free of charge and getting it up and running takes maybe 10 minutes. Plus Linux is a great thing to have on your PC anyway. So you could see this extra step as a bit of a blessing in disguise. So if you have Windows, I've put a few simple steps on my website of how you too can stick your floppies in Windows. You know what I mean? And speaking of websites, I recommend PCBWay.com. Yeah, it's longer than normal, where you can get those great PCBs from just five bucks. Because as we all know, PCB stands for Painted Commodore Boxes, doesn't it? Now here's another trick I've learned. Uh, you'll remember that I put this fancy label on the disc. So what if you really do just want one game per disc? It kind of breaks the nostalgia and the retro feel by having to go into that newfangled media access menu on the C64. Well, I noticed that the C64 added this additional file, and it turns out if you name your D64 game file as that to begin with, the C64 will automatically mount it when inserted, just like a real Commodore 64. So let's try that with Sanxian. Thanks, Sanxian. Can you read that? Oh, sorry. And there you go. The C64 sees the game straight away. You can load your games the old fashioned way. Babe, mm -hmm. I was just looking at my comments and someone said in South Africa, they call a three and a half inch disc a stiffy. I wonder what they call a hard disc. Oh, we probably shouldn't go there. Now, another question was, can we load and save basic programs that we've written on the C64 to this disk drive? And this also makes me wonder, previously we just copied D64 files, which are images of full disks. But if we only copied PRG files, the game programs themselves, I bet we could fit a lot more than seven on one disk. Now, another great question, we're just gonna hold hands now, is whether you can load save states of games. But I do consider this cheating and well, I just can't condone cheating in that way. Let's give it a try. So now you can save your games to disk, just like when you had an action replay cartridge or such like for your real Commodore 64, you big cheat. <laughs> and one final bit of housekeeping, let's make our miraculous disk holier than thou, the disk hole, of course.
Oh, and one thing I should point out is I had a few people ask, why didn't I make a 1581? Because that was the three and a half inch disk drive that Commodore actually released. To me personally, the 1581 just isn't as nostalgic or iconic. Estimates put sales figures in the thousands, whilst the 1541 sold millions. Maybe it was just poor inventory or bad marketing, but rumor has it that the unsold 1581s were even stripped down and reused as Amiga 500 drives. Secondly, the color of the 1581 just doesn't match the C64 at all. It just looks wrong to me. And thirdly, the point wasn't to make a three and a half inch disk drive. It was to shrink down the 1541 that most of us used back in the day by the same scale as the C64 mini is a shrunk down C64. So there you go. Check out the full project instructions at perifractic.com and you too can give your friends and neighbors floppy envy by sticking your floppy in windows. Although your neighbors may not be your friends anymore, if you do. We'll be back soon with more nostalgic fun. Until then, thanks for watching. Subscribe and join below. And cheerio. Do you want to go look out the window? Come on then. Basically, uh, load up a uh, hudgen you. <laughs> so you can load up a earlier point. <laughs> you have to burp in the middle of my speech. Huh? Dirty girl. What a good girl though. That's not very helpful. I am aware of you. Check out the oh, sorry. <laughs> Get her in the face. I was trying to give you a hug. Okay, you can hug this way.